Good morning, uh, everyone. I'm Dr. Pani Bhushan, head of the Department of uh, Pediatrics and Neonatology at Manipal Hospital, Ishampur. Uh, dear friends, uh, we've been seeing a lot of infections in the last three weeks. Almost every child who goes to the school has been uh, getting unwell and uh, coming to the outpatient departments in the hospitals and uh, nurse uh, OPDs. Uh, so I thought I'll just uh, just brief a little about what these illnesses are. Uh, when should you be worried? When should you go to the hospital? When can you relax and uh, wait? So basically, the 90-95% uh, of the infections have been viral respiratory tract, uh, respiratory tract infections. Uh, meaning, a virus has bothered the nose, throat and uh, your child is having high grade fevers and uh, cough. Uh, what we have been observing is the fevers are of very high grade. Uh, it is lasting about 2 to 3 days. And by day three to day four, the fever seems to be settling down, which means the fever still stays, but the frequency comes down, which means instead of coming every once in four hours or six hours, now the fever is, uh, now there's a gap of more than six hours or eight hours in between the uh, fevers. So if your child on day three uh, looks reasonably cheerful than what he or she was on day one, day two, number one. Number two, if the fever frequency has come down, which means the gap between the fevers has increased. You probably can relax a little, but the cough, what we are saying is, the cough tends to stay for about week, 10 days and longer. And most of the cough syrups have not been greatly effective at this point in time. Uh, but two things are very important. You know, if there are no high grade fevers accompanying into day three, day four, and two, if there is no breathing difficulty, if your child is comfortably breathing, otherwise looking alert and happy, and cough is the only issue which is uh, no one then happening. You don't have to get too panicky about it. So absence of fever and no breathing difficulty, just light cough, a simple cough syrup would do. This is number one. 90% of them would uh, come into this category. But some children who are known to wheeze can have a little more, uh, what to say, troublesome uh, set of symptoms or some children tend to wheeze with viral infections. Uh, so there's a difference between the two. Most children can have a wheeze uh, and that doesn't necessarily mean they're asthmatic children. Uh, basically what it means is when there is a bad viral infection, some children have wheezing and as a result of which there can be breathing difficulty. So a good number of children this particular season have been wheezing along with viral infection too. So such children may need some kind of a nebulization help or some medicine to open up their airways. So if your pediatrician is prescribing some kind of a nebulizer, do not get uh, too anxious about it. The illness is such, usually it's a period of 5 to 7 days and they should get better after that. And as I again said, fever and breathing difficulty should make you come to the hospital. Now, this is also a season of dengue. Not meaning to scare you, just in case if the fever goes into day 3, day 4, and the frequency doesn't seem to be coming down. There is not much of cough and cold. And more importantly, three important things to remember. If your kid looks too tired or there is a bad headache or a bad tummy ache, please come to the hospital. It's important that a pediatrician reviews your child, sees if he or needs a blood test to rule out a possible dengue infection. So a fever persisting into day three, day four, along with that being too tired. Tiredness is very, very important and classical. A lot of headache goes with the dengue and then uh, tummy ache. If these three things are there, into day three, day four of illness, it's always safe to get a pediatrician survey. It could be still a viral infection of a throat, but uh, nevertheless, it is safer to do so. So, so we have had viral respiratory tract infections, then we have had wheezing associated respiratory tract infections, and a small number of dengue infections, which is important to be ruled out if the fever stays on with headache, tiredness. Number Four, I think a, a good number of children are also having hand, foot and mouth disease. Uh, you may have seen in the television or the WhatsApp uh, groups uh, spreading the message. This is a milder illness. Uh, basically, if you see any kind of rashes over the palm and the soles and sometimes also in the mouth, it is very characteristic of hand, foot and mouth disease. The, the good thing about this is it's a very mild illness, very mild grade of fever, but the rashes can linger on for about five days. Some children may have a difficulty in eating because of the rashes inside the mouth. Uh, this is not something you need to get very worried about. But the key, most important thing you need to remember is do not send your child to the school. This illness is highly infective. You send your kid to the school, everybody else in the class is very likely to pick it up. So the, 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 the importance of hand, foot and mouth is 
don't send your child to the school and don't get worried at all it will come down some kind of antihistamine syrup or anti itch syrup should sort the rashes out and five days down the line you should generally be all right uh, usually the infective period is about a week from the day the kid has started having rashes so that week you better off holding back your child at school so if you remember these things i think you should be fine uh, all of this are self limiting only dengue is the one you need to be worried about so remember that and then if your child has a background wheezing tendency any presence of breathing difficulty extremely disturbing cough in the night uh, take a help from your pediatrician i hope uh, this amount of information helps you for this season 